Are you here to help find the baby Saurians? And I'm Toba. You must be the helpers that we've been waiting for. Uh, uh, it's nice to meet you too, but we're just passing through. Oh, but Uncle Sanka said he was going to send some of his friends over to help us. You sure he didn't mean you? Yeah, sorry. Whatever this is about, it sounds like you've got the wrong end of the stick. Wrong end of the stick? Darn it! We've been tricked, Toonie. I should have known that Glasses Guy was a con artist. What are we supposed to do about the baby Saurians now? Time's running out. It's okay, Huni. Don't worry. Why don't you tell us what happened with these baby Saurians, huh? There's been a lot of unrest in the tribe lately, and my dad Saurian got injured. Her name's Nana, and she has three little babies. After what happened to Nana, her babies were so scared that they ran off and hid. I'm really worried about them, so I decided to go look for them. If Nana is your dad, Saurian, why isn't he the one looking for them? My dad's one of the elders, so he's busy getting ready for Turnfire Night. It's a really important ceremony. More important than this, anyway. I'm not supposed to be out here either, but I snuck out without telling him. I didn't think it would take very long, but then that guy we ran into made us tell him loads of stories, and it wasted so much time. Yeah, he was so selfish. He doesn't have a heart. It's all right. Don't let him get to you. We're here now and we'll help you because we care a lot, don't we, Traveler? They should be. I already managed to find their tracks and it seems like they're hiding on the cliff. Really? Wow! Thank you so much, Mr. Traveler and Miss Paimon. Awesome. You gotta be careful out on the cliffs, though. They're really steep. Even grown-ups have trouble climbing them. <laughs> we found them! Wait, but what's that other... A how? Well, if it isn't the gruesome twosome who wormed their way into our servant circle of friends. <laughs> Still awestruck from the last time we met? Would that be why you hastily scrambled up here to pay your respects the moment you saw us? <laughs> I suppose we can't blame you. Such is the spell that our majesty casts on our minions. Very well. You heathens leave us no choice. <laughs> the almighty dragon lord, Kahul Howe, shall grant you the audience that you seek. Come. Pucker up. You may now kiss our feet. Wait, aren't you like Kanichi's sidekick? What the heck are you going on about? You're somehow managing to be even more annoying than the last time we met. Silence! Who are you calling sidekick? We are the Dragon Supreme, sovereign ruler of the Nation of Flame. We shall have you know that last time, were it not for Kanichi's earnest pleading on your behalf, you would have received not a single word of mercy. Oh, come on. You talk big, but Kanichi clearly has you under lock and key. <laughs> That's more like it. If you must know, our humble servant begged us to investigate an abyss incident near Hoitzitlan, and we chose to grant his request. Abyss incident? See this little lizard? Its mother, a medium-sized lizard, came under the influence of abyssal power. In her confusion, she attacked my servant's tribe, then assailed her own offspring. Yikes. So how is she doing now? She was but a lowly bug fighting against the power of the Abyss. Naturally, she has departed for the Night Kingdom. <laughs> Such a fragile creature. Apparently, she ended her struggle by leaping from a cliff. Leaping from a cliff? My dear anemic flying ant, as addled with questions as your head may be, please keep them to yourself and wipe that absurd expression off your face. 
We are the almighty dragon lord, Kahulahau! Not a wish-granting fountain. Anemic flying ant! Huge! Just you wait to can play at the ugly nickname game. Hmm, we sense a faint abyssal energy. <laughs> An evil sorcerer must be lurking nearby, but they are well hidden. If you encounter any suspicious outlanders, be sure to give them a robust interrogation. Suspicious outlanders? Wait, are you mocking us? <laughs> How dare you cast aspersions on your ruler, heathen! You're just lucky that our servant has such vile taste in friends! Otherwise, we would beat you black and blue, and then purple, then black again! <laughs> if you're not here to kiss my feet, then get out of my sight. Do not impede the work of the almighty Dragon Lord, Kahulahau! Wow, you're back already? That was so fast. <sighs> I'm so glad that the babies are all right. Thank you both so much. Now we can finally go home and stop worrying about them. You're welcome. Pizza cake! You're not from Natland, right? Because your clothes look different than ours. Oh. Hey, you must be tired after all that climbing. You should come take a rest at my house. Yeah, please come. I promise you'll get a big Scions at the Canopy welcome. We love having guests, and you're really nice people. Not like Glasses Guy. By the sound of it, Glasses Guy wasn't from Natland either, right? Uh-huh. Well, his clothes sure weren't. You know what? Now that I think about it, there was something really fishy about him. Really? Maybe he was the suspicious outlander that Ahal mentioned. Sure, if you're interested. Oh, let me think. How did the conversation go again? Oh, please, mister. I've told you so many stories already. When are you gonna help me find the baby Saurians? Just one more story. One more, I swear. Why don't you tell me more about that ball of fire? I heard that there was a huge transparent ball of fire that used to burn 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, maybe even further back than that. Oh, you mean turn fire. That's where the ancient name Mollipo comes from. Oh, wow. So it was the origin of an ancient name. That's impressive. Uh-huh. There's a story behind every ancient name. The legend goes that the turn fire first appeared in the era of the Grand Alliance. It was used by the tyrant Och Khan to rule over Natlan and oppress anyone who opposed him. Turn fire is different from normal fire. If you get set on fire with it, you'll feel a horrible burning pain from behind you, but you won't die from it right away. And whatever you do, you mustn't turn back to look at it. Why? What happens if you turn back? As soon as you turn around, poof! You get burned to a crisp. Well, good golly gee. I mean, it's one thing to singe someone's clothes, but burning people alive? That is a big no-no in my book. Right? How nasty is it to burn someone from behind and not even let them turn around to look? Och Khan really was an evil tyrant. Yes, shocking behavior. Now, let me guess. Eventually, a valiant hero came to save the day? That's usually how these stories go. Good guess, Uncle Glasses. Seems like you really know your stuff. The hero was called Yupanki. He's the ancestor of our tribe. Mm-hmm. Yupanki was friends with Och Khan the Tyrant, and also Shibalanke, the first Pyro Archon. He was working as an ordnance officer for the Grand Alliance at the time. He didn't like how Och Khan was such a cruel tyrant, so he stole the Turnfire and threw it at the Och Khan's army. 
The soldiers couldn't defend against it, and they all got turned to ash. And that's how our ancestors set our people free. But, just as he was about to leave the city, he thought he heard Oj Khan calling out to him from behind. It caught him off guard, and he turned around to look. But Oj Khan wasn't there. All he saw was a city burn black, an army in ruins, and giant flames reaching up into the sky! A split second later, the flames he saw burst out from inside his eyes and swallowed him up. All it took was a single glance. As soon as he looked back, he was burned to a crisp. The question is, was this the price he paid for stealing the turn fire, or the price of turning back? Nobody knows the answer, but the fire that consumed you, Punky, burned more fiercely than any other. It burned for a hundred days until it burned a hole right through the ley lines. And then... The flame dropped into the deathly dark night kingdom, where it still burns to this day. The grown-ups say that it lights up the path that leads to the next life, but for the dead to be reborn, they have to accept the flames and be purified by the fire first. It's like a final look back at your life, where you have to answer for everything you did. Anyway, that's the story of Yuponki's turn fire. Ah, a fine parable indeed. So, is it true? Is it really possible to find this fire in the Night Kingdom? I don't know. I think it's just a story. Either way, I assume this name has been passed down in your tribe ever since? Sure has. It went to Burkina, the hero that we celebrate on Turnfire Night. But that was 500 years ago. Yeah, and now it belongs to Kanich. So we often call him Malipo Kanich. Kanich, huh? All right, Uncle Glasses, that's enough stories. Now can you please go find the baby Saurians for us like you promised? Uh, I would, but doesn't the legend of the turn fire teach us not to look back? Let's not go dredging up the past. Tell me more about this Kinich guy. One more story, I swear, starting now. No? Careful, Toba. You look dangerously close to cursing me out right now. Tut tut, we can't have that. Cursing is for grown-ups only. Uncle, you'd better not be trying to trick us, or the Turnfire will get you when you die! How would it get me if I'm outside of Natlan? Uncle Glasses isn't from here, you know. Unlike you. Huh? Wait, is that...? All right, kiddos. I'm a man of my word. Two of my friends are on their way here, and, uh, yeah, they'll help you out on my behalf. Work them like dogs, okay? That's what they're here for. Don't go easy on them just for my sake. Really? Well, first, can you tell us your name? We met at the foot of this cliff, so... Beneath the peaks, let's go with Sanka. Seriously? If you don't believe me, turn around and see for yourselves. They're right behind you. Huh? Where? Oh, wait! Uncle Sanka! Where did you go? Yeah, definitely a fishy character. It sounds like he was digging for info about the ancient names. Yeah, and not only that, but he betrayed us too. 
He'll pay for this! All he got out of us was some stories, though. What's the worst that could happen? Hmm. Traveler, maybe we should go tell Kenich about this. Ahau says he's investigating it, but he's a bit of a loose cannon. We probably shouldn't take him at his word. Huh? You know Kenich? Um, not very well, but we have met him before, and one time we had a meal together. Aw, oh, man. I'm so jealous. I never even spoken to him. He's so cool. He's the Saurian Hunter, and he has a really awesome ancient name. Me neither. I don't think my dad really likes him, though. He always tells me to stay away from him. Probably because of that little creep he always hangs out with. He's nasty, and he's so full of himself. Oh, the creep who calls himself Kahul Ahau? Yeah, we've had the... pleasure of meeting him, too. He sure loves pushing people's buttons. Exactly! I don't know why Kenich partnered up with him. Why didn't he pick me instead? Uh-oh! Oh. Honey, look how late it is! We've been out way too long. We better get home now or we'll get yelled at. Oh, yikes. You're right. Okay, well, this path here leads to our settlement. If you decide to visit, remember to come to my house. If there's anything you need, my dad can help get it for you. Hope to see you soon! We gotta run. Bye for now. 